Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jose. I am the eighth colony, and oh, wait, sorry, I got an email. One sec. Oh. My. God! <laughs> <sighs> okay. Okay. That was crazy. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to report that I, the Egg Paladin, have finally reached 200 subscribers! <laughs> oh my god, guys! I cannot believe I actually reached 200 subscribers! <laughs> okay, okay, that's enough. Anyways, as a thank you for reaching 200 subscribers- <laughs> SHUT THE F*** UP! GOD! Okay, so, look, I'm surprised that I reached 2 <clears throat> This milestone, I'm very happy and thankful to all of you guys for staying with me for so many months ever since I've been on this site, despite how shit the website has been lately. Okay, so for my 200 sub special, I want to make a video that I always wanted to make ever since I started YouTube. UNPOPULAR OPINIONS! No! Yep, you heard me, I'm going to be making an UNPOPULAR OPINIONS video, and since I love a certain blue hedgehog, no homo, I'm going to talk about my unpopular opinions on a Sonic the Hedgehog series in hopes if many people may or may not agree with. But hey, I love the trick of Sonic fanboys, so hey, f*** them. Okay, now before I share and express my unpopular opinions, let me just say this right here, right now, you know the drill, it's my opinion, yada yada yada, and also, they are not classified as fact. If you guys agree or disagree with me, that's fine, I completely understand. Oh yeah, I also just want to say that my Sonic opinions are not going to focus mainly on the games. I will also mention some of the comics, cartoons, music, voice actors, etc. Just so we are clear. Also, I just want to say if any of you guys have any unpopular opinions, please feel free to share them in the comment section below if you like, but please try to be civil about this. I don't want to make people have believed that I'm ruining the Sonic the Hedgehog series or the Sonic fanbase. Hell, that fanbase has already been broken. <laughs> also, one more thing I just want to mention. Just because people agree with my opinions and not yours, that doesn't mean that my opinion is superior to yours. I just love sharing my thoughts on things to have a nice, calm conversation with good people. Oh, they're a bunch of tarts. Okay, now it's time to get this 200 sub special on the road. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be my 200 sub special video on my top 20 unpopular Sonic the Hedgehog opinions. Why top 20? Because I got so many unpopular opinions that it can make my penis fall apart. Little nasty! So now that I got that out of the way, it's time to begin my top 20 unpopular Sonic opinions 200 sub special video. Now let's try some Sonic fan brats! Number 20. I don't hate Big the Cat. What? Okay, look, I know this may not be an unpopular opinion, and most Sonic fans seem to like Big the Cat, unless you're IDN. Shut your f mouth! Anyways, on to Big. People hated Big the Cat in the past because of his gameplay in Sonic Adventure, which has him fishing Froggy and. Yeah, it freaking sucks. It's Come <laughs> on! Are you f serious, dude? However, in my opinion, I actually like Big's personality and actions. Here's what I mean. If a character in a video game has a likable personality, but the gameplay sucks, that doesn't make the character a bad character. Heck, Silver's gameplay sucked in Sonic 06, but his character was well developed. Amy's gameplay in Sonic Adventure was not good, but had a very good arc in the story to be more independent. So with Big the Cat, while his gameplay is bad, I don't see it as a way for people to hate on him. Big may be friendly and naive, but he's strong and willing to help others in need. Whether it's saving Froggy, helping Amy and Cream as Team Rose beat the sh** out of the ancient echidnas. So yeah, I f*** with Big. Don't take that out of context, IGN! Sonic was never good. Number 19. I like Sonic Forces. Hold on, let me explain before you guys lose your tempers. Okay. Now, if you guys have been on the internet bashing on this game, first off, you need some help. 
But in all seriousness, yes, I did enjoy Sonic Forces. I liked the graphics, modern Sonic and the Avatar's gameplay was fun to play, the Avatar customization was a good choice, and the story, while not feeling too serious, was pretty interesting to some degree. And the music is pretty catchy. I mean, it's Sonic music. Do I need to explain? It's f awesome! <laughs> now, I will admit, while I like the game, there are some things I don't like about it. Clyde Sonic did not need to be there, not to mention his gameplay sucked. Yeah, no sh Honey! I didn't like how levels ended so quickly lasting for like a minute or less. We never fought Shadow nor Chaos which was a major letdown. Infinite, what well, interesting was this supporting villain which I never felt sorry for. The writing wasn't interesting nor fun regardless of where it was taking place. And lastly, ah! WHY IS THIS F*** HERE IN THIS GAME? GET HIM OUT OF HERE! <laughs> Okay look, Sonic Forces is not a perfect game, and my handsome man into a gamer said in his Sonic Forces reviews, it's a polarized game! Also, please go check out Nitsua Gamer's Part 2 video on Sonic Forces. He does a much better job explaining the Sonic Forces in detail. <laughs> That's me! Sure, some of his opinions may be different from mine, but it's worth the watch. Be sure to check out the link in the description below, and if you don't watch them, I will come over to your house, find you, and tell you... It's your opinion, I will accept that. So yeah, I like Sonic Forces, and to me, it's a fun game. Come at me, Sonic Defense Squad! Number 18. Kareem the Rabbit is the best female Sonic character. Excuse me, what? Okay, listen. I understand people like other female characters like Amy, Blaze, Rouge, Wave. No, f*** Wave, she sucks. <laughs> But okay, anyways, back to Cream. Now there are fans that do like Cream, but some fans have overlooked her and Sega have been shoving her away from current Sonic games with no explanation. See, the reason why I think she is the best female Sonic character is for her sweet personality and actions to help her friends. Not only is this cute and adorable, but it also makes her feel very useful in the form of her child Cheese. Both of these two are a powerful team and are NOT meant to be f with. Show some respect! Cream has also helped her friends like Amy and Big forming Team Rose, healing her teammates in Sonic Chronicles, and even is the one responsible for making Blaze more social and caring. I like the other female characters except Wave, but it comes down to my own opinion and point of view. Cream is best girl. DON'T AT ME! If you'd like. Number 17. I love the soundtrack from Sonic R. <laughs> Alright, this one may be subjective and true. I have never played Sonic R because I never owned a Sega Saturn even though it's trash at this point. But, I have seen gameplay videos of it and yeah, the gameplay is bullshit. <laughs> However, what I did enjoy about the game that made me happy was the music. I absolutely love the music in Sonic R, but when a lot of people reviewed the game, they said that the music in this game doesn't seem to fit the tone and character of the Sonic series, and to that I say, Are you crazy? Okay, all of the songs may sound like it's not Sonic material, but Sonic soundtracks are known for having a mixed genre of music, like rock, jazz, hip-hop, piano, blowjobs, you name it. So, if other Sonic games can have a mixed genre of music, what's a fan excuse for Sonic R's music anyway? I mean, come on guys, it's goddamn catchy! <laughs> yes, I know that Sonic R's soundtrack is pretty small and doesn't have that much variety, but listening to the soundtracks like Work It Out, Can You Feel the Sunshine, and who can forget the famous Okay, I know that it's not everyone else's kind of music, and that's fine, I won't judge them, but when I'm feeling down and I want to listen to some music, you know damn well I'll be listening to that Okay, for a number 16 spot is going to piss off some people, but hey, it's my opinion so I'm gonna see it anyway. Number 16 is that Sonic CD is my least favorite of the classic era. This one may not be an unpopular opinion since this game has been shared among social media for its flaws, but I still want to mention it regardless. So what do I have to say about Sonic CD? The game freaking sucks! <laughs> I'm not 
joking. Sonic CD may look cool, but from my point of view, it was painful to play throughout this game. I didn't like the level design which focused much more on exploration and not balancing it with speed and platforming. The time travel mechanic, while interesting, was dumb since you need speed in order to time travel to the past or future, and since level design will let you do that, it can get annoying. Lastly, I didn't like the boss battles in this game. They were too easy and some of them were actually a f joke, like look at this! It's just giving me bubbles! How the f is that threatening?! Ah! Okay, look, bottom line, I don't like Sonic CD, and I don't prefer it to be one of my favorite Sonic games, unless I do something stupid like stay at top 50 Sonic games list. Screw that! Okay, this next unpopular opinion is gonna be somewhat weird, but I'm gonna say this anyway. Number 15 is that I think Sonic Heroes has the best level design in the series. Are you f kidding me? Alright, like I said, this one is a weird opinion to speak out, but allow me to explain. See, in Sonic games, having Sonic or friends run around, you need good level design in order to have a good balance of speed, platforming, and exploration, and in my opinion, Sonic Heroes gets it right. You lying! Okay, look, I know that there were Sonic games like the classic games, adventure games, Unleashed, Generations, and maybe- ah! NOT THAT ONE! Alright, listen, I like Sonic Heroes, and yes, the game has some mixed reviews, but it has some good level design for a player to explore in some places, and has a good mix of speed and platforming. Now, sure, the levels are linear from point A to point B, but has multiple pathways for the player to actually run to their choosing. I love running through Seaside Hill, Real Canyon was fun, and Final Fortress? This thing's me my dick rock hard! <laughs> okay, look. I know that some of these stages can be short, but not Sonic Forces short! No! Call me crazy all you guys want, but I had a blast with these level designs. And if you can't beat the levels, then you obviously suck at the game. <laughs> Okay, this next one is really gonna anger a lot of people, but hey, unpopular opinions meant to piss off people, right? F you! Alright, let's get this over with. Number 14 is that I think Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric is NOT worse than Sonic 06. Bruh. Alright, look, both Sonic 06 and Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric have both been regarded as the worst Sonic games of all time by both fans and critics, and I can certainly see why. Both games have strange gameplay choices, confusing story plots, and weird looking presentations, mostly in terms of graphics. <laughs> However, when it comes to see which of these two games is the worst, many people go with Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, which I have to disagree. See, back in my Why I Like Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric video, which Toy Watch by the way, in the description, I explained how I liked its gameplay as well as its open world, boss battles, animation, and voice direction, which made me like the game as a result and I had no problems in the game that didn't make me angry and I never felt bored. Sonic 06 on the other hand is the exact opposite. Every time I went back into that game, I honestly felt the story was confusing, the characters were bland except for Shadow, Silver, and Mephilus, the cutscenes and presentation looked very weird and somewhat out of place in the Sonic game, and DON'T EVEN GET ME STARTED ON THE GAMEPLAY! Yes, I know the game has some elements to Sonic Adventure mainly in terms of gameplay and level design, but with its bad camera, loose controls, and a shitload of glitches, it almost got me to shoot my dick out! OH MY COCKO! Okay, look. Both of these games are terrible, I know, but to me when it comes to quality and fun, I honestly don't think Sonic Boom deserves to be claimed as the worst Sonic game than Sonic 06. But hey, look at the bright side, at least Sonic Boom doesn't have the ladies! Bitch, the door. Number 13. Okay, this next one is somewhat of a continuation on Sonic Boom, but hey, I'm going to say this opinion, which is that I don't hate the Sonic Boom games. I want to die. So before you pull a gun on me or on yourself and you can't handle my opinion, <laughs> please hear me out. I said earlier that I liked Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric in my opinion, but as for the other Sonic Boom games, Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal and Sonic Boom Fire and Ice, I actually like those games too! Ew! Yeah, yeah, I know, call me wherever you want, but I actually had fun with these games. In Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal, you explore different areas and levels, giving you a Metroidvania look into the level design, which is awesome! I'm a f sucker for Metroidvania games like Metroid, the Shantae, Dusty Elysian Tale, Ori, and many other Metroidvania games. Dude, Metroidvania games kick ass! However, people complain that the game has bad level design, had terrible dialogue, and the gameplay was repetitive to the point where it's mandatory to complete the game 100% to beat the final boss! What the fuck? Okay, 
Why I made this story and dialogue was dumb, not having any playable, and completing the game was a stupid way to 100% the game to beat was idiotic to the developers, but I had fun with the game. As for Sonic Boom Fire and Nice, the game was linear and still had a good time, having fun with its speed, platforming gameplay, having all 5 characters playable, including Amy, the presentation was good, I enjoyed fighting the bosses in this game, and the music is surprisingly shockingly good, to the point where I want this game to have a MOTHER SOUNDTRACK release! PLEASE SEGA! DO IT! Now, I don't like the games for its major flaws, but that didn't stop me from having fun and I had no issues whatsoever. Or maybe that's because you just suck at the games. <laughs>Okay, this next one has some positive feedback, but back then it was hated among fans in the past, and it's a certain game that has gained mixed reviews from both fans and critics. Well, for me, I'm here to say f it and express my thoughts and opinions on this game. Ladies and gentlemen, my number 12 unpopular opinion is that I think Sonic and the Black Knight is a great video game. Yeah, that's right, I like this game, and if you don't, you can kiss my Okay, but in all seriousness, let me explain why I love Sonic and the Black Knight. Man, I'm feeling very surprisingly positive today. Anyways, <clears throat> Sonic and the Black Knight is the second and surprisingly the last Sonic game in the Sonic Storybook series, with Sonic having to use a sword as the main gimmick. And here's where the people have problems with the game. See, this game is not just about speed and platforming, but it's also a hack and slash, and since this game is on the Wii, there are motion controls! No! This is where people were turned off by this, because the motion controls in this game at times don't always function properly, and the controls feel weird. But to me, I never had that problem. Did the game give me some issues from time to time? In some cases, yes, but I never let that stop me from playing the game and really having fun. Plus, I really like the story and writing in this game. The way how Shiro Mikawa wrote Sonic to be fun, cool, and adventurous, but caring and determined shows how likable Sonic is as a character in this game. This is how I would love to see Sonic act in future games, and the way how Sega should actually bring this gorgeous man back to write the Sonic games again, aside from 06. Ah! And of course, lastly, the music in this game is good to listen to. In fact, I've used one of these tracks in one of my previous videos I made in the past. It's good for God's sake! Yeah. If there are some things that I don't like about the game are some of the missions in this game, and the multiplayer sucks so much, yes! regardless, I still think this game is great. Is it perfect? No. But I don't think it's worth a try, even if you're a huge Sonic fan. NEXT ENTRY! Okay, this next one may piss off some fans of these games, but there has been a debate on these two games in the past that's honestly entertaining yet interesting to listen, but here, I like to trigger some people. So for my number 11 entry is that I like Sonic Adventure more than Sonic Adventure 2. Okay then, <laughs> this is going to be fun. So if you're a Sonic fan, first of all, you're f cool, and also, for the adventure games, these games have been regarded as the best in the Sonic series. Heck, people even say that these two games are the last good Sonic games, which I have to say, ah, Now I like Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, but that begs the question, which of these two is the best? Some say that Sonic Adventure 2 was better in terms of story and replayability, but others say Sonic Adventure 1 has fluid gameplay and a mixed genre soundtrack. And since I said that, I'm going with Sonic Adventure 1. What? Alright, look. Sonic Adventure 1, in my opinion, did a good job replicating the classic games into 3D in terms of gameplay, level design, and characters. Each character plays how they were in the classic games. As for Sonic Adventure 2, it's good, but I have my problems. One of my main problems is the gameplay. Wait! Before you kill me, hear me out! I don't hate the gameplay. It's fun, but I do have my problems, and that's mainly the treasure hunting levels and the shooting levels with Tails, Knuckles, Rouge, and Eggman. See, in Sonic Adventure 1, the treasure hunting levels with Knuckles was fun and simple, with the radar having to locate more than one Master Emerald piece in the level. And with Gamma, his controls were smooth and fluid, but in Sonic Adventure 2, the radar has been busted to the point from you have to find one Master Emerald piece at a time, but when you find a Master Emerald piece, the radar won't pick it up until you find the next Emerald piece that the radar wanted you to find. And as for his shooting levels, while I'm happy that there's no time limit, the controls are too goddamn heavy and it isn't as fluid or smooth as Gamma, which as you can tell, is absolute BULLSHIT! 
the only things that I will agree that Sonic Adventure 2 has better than Sonic Adventure 1 is that it has a much more interesting story and the music is fantastic. But when it comes to gameplay and having fun with Sonic Adventure's old style gameplay, my choice will always be Sonic Adventure 1. Suck it, Adventure 2 fanboys! <laughs> Alright, so have I triggered you guys yet? Yeah. Good, cause now I'm going to make another unpopular opinion that's going to piss you off even more. No! Yep, so for my number 10 unpopular opinion is, oh boy, you guys are going to hate me for this. I prefer Sonic Unleashed more than Sonic Generations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to love this. Anyways, let me explain. I love both Sonic Unleashed and Generations as much as I like Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. So if you guys see my Q&A video, link in description, I've always had a love for Sonic Unleashed for its story, writing, music, level design, and of course, its gameplay, where we play as Daytime Sonic and Sonic the Werehog. <laughs> okay, I know. Not everyone likes the Werehog, but I do. Yeah, I said it. But anyways, back on track. So as for Sonic Generations, I love the game mostly in terms of gameplay from both Classic and Mario Sonic, but there are some issues that kind of suck in my opinion. First of all, I didn't like the story which was bland and generic, then it makes me wonder what it was going to be like originally. Some of the missions, while some were okay, were annoying and a bit hard to control. I'm gonna get you, Amy Mission! I understand that people like Generations more than Unleash, which is okay, but for me, Sonic Unleash is my go-to game. This again is connected to my previous opinion again, but now back to Sonic Unleash. For my next unpopular opinion is that I like playing as Sonic the Werehog more than Daytime Sonic. Say what? You guys heard me? I f love the Werehog. Kill me now! So many of you guys are thinking that I'm smoking sh right now, but no, I'm serious. See, why I admitted the Werehog's gameplay isn't perfect, I still like the Werehog's gameplay for how it has platforming and exploration which Sonic is known for in addition to his speed. As for the combat, I'm a sucker for hack and slash games, so having the Werehog slicing and dicing his enemies feels satisfying and sometimes repetitive. As for Daytime Sonic, I like his gameplay too, but I will admit that there are some drawbacks. I didn't like the quick time events in most daytime stages, and running through water like an Adabad, gaining EXP with Daytime Sonic felt slow, and exploring Chunan as Daytime Sonic was kind of annoying. Regardless, I still have fun with Daytime Sonic, but the Werehog still wins it for me at the end of the day. I never liked that intro. And speaking of Sonic X, it's time for my next unpopular opinion, which is that I think Jason Griffith is my favorite Sonic voice actor. What? Alright, listen please. Back in my Q&A video that I made, WATCH IT! I explained how Jason is my favorite Sonic voice, but I'll gladly see it here in case you guys want a little description in my point of view. See, the reason why I love Jason Griffith as Sonic is because of his tone and how he voices Sonic, which makes it feel like he's having fun playing the Hedgehog and seeing how Jason voices Sonic in the games like Unleashed and The Black Knight honestly makes me feel that he sounds very fun-loving, adventurous, and cool, but still have a very caring heart, and hearing Jason deliver those lines of dialogue, it makes me horny. <laughs> ha! I'm joking. Regardless, I know others like Ryan Drummond or Jason Griffin voicing Sonic more, and that's fine, but if you want my opinion, Ryan's Sonic voice is good, though some of the lines feel weird in some cases. Watch out! You're gonna crash! Ah! Yeah, that was gross. As for Roger Craig Smith, the dude is cool and I do like his voice work in other forms of media, but with Sonic on the other hand, it's just garbage! <laughs> so yeah, I know that there are more Sonic voice actors out there, and those are okay, but since Ryan, Jason, and Roger are the most recognizable, my choice is with Jason Griffith. Wow, okay, this next one is really going to increase the dislike button. Well, first of all, don't touch it, and listen to me, because you guys are not going to like this. My next unpopular opinion is that I like Sonic Boom more than Sonic Sad AM. Okay, I think I just lost the subscribers there. So now that I angered some people out there watching this, allow me to explain. 
I like both Sonic Saturday M and the Sonic Boom cartoons, but to me, I've always liked Sonic Boom for its smart humor, references to pop culture and Sonic memes, and personalities of the characters, except for these punks. Kill them! <laughs> Alright, look. Saturday M is good, but after watching it a second time, I felt like the show was honestly overrated, and there were moments that I felt bored. It was interesting and had some fun and relatable characters as well as some good writing to boot, but I wasn't as fully invested as I was back then. With Sonic Boom, I was laughing for how it played out and the jokes landed hit on me, okay most of the time. Not to mention the show did add some acting scenes which were fun to watch. Not all episodes were great and some actually sucked so much MAJOR ASS! But hey, I'm a Sonic fan that likes to watch Sonic and friends fight and have fun. Saturday M is good too, but again, I wasn't feeling hyped or seeing the characters have fun aside from Sonic, Tails, and to some extent, Rotor. Plus, some of these characters looked awful. I know that it was the 90s and the animation and character designing was limited unlike what we have today, but man, some of the minor cast members look absolutely weird. Not to mention did it. Like, who the f is this guy? Lazar? Hell no, get this guy out of my face! So yeah, I like both shows, but when it comes to which of these two I like the most, Sonic Boom is my favorite show to watch. Sorry, Alex Hedgefox. You have bad taste, Jose! Okay, now back to some more positivity. Hope you guys didn't shoot yourselves in the f foot to avoid this video. Maybe. Okay, for our next entry is that Sonic Adventure 2 soundtrack is the best music soundtrack in the series. Okay, finally some cheers! So anyways, back to Sonic Adventure 2. Okay, I get it. <sighs> anyways, Sonic Adventure- SHUT UP, damn it! Okay, so yeah, Sonic Adventure 2 soundtrack is my favorite soundtrack in the whole Sonic series. Now, this may not be unpopular since Sonic Adventure 2 has been loved by both fans and critics, and is one of the most popular Sonic games in the franchise, which is a no-brainer. However, the reason why I consider this unpopular opinion is because throughout the years of Sonic music in Sonic games, there have been fans that prefer different soundtracks in Sonic games that they prefer more in Sonic Adventure 2, because other Sonic games have a bit of a mixed genre in Sonic games, like Sonic Colors, Sonic Unleashed, Sonic and the Black Knight, Sonic Heroes, Sonic Lost Scroll, hell, some even prefer the soundtracks from Adventure 1, Forces, or even- <laughs> And for the record, those soundtracks in the games are awesome too, but for Sonic Adventure 2 soundtrack, it wins it for me. Some people don't like this game's soundtrack because while it does have a bit of a small genre of music themes like piano, jazz, and rap, the majority of the soundtrack is mainly focused on hard rock, which is honestly my favorite genre of music. I love some hard rock in Sonic Adventure 2, so there's the main menu themes, the characters' theme songs, the rock songs in the levels, as well as the boss battle music themes, and don't even get me started on a main theme of the game, LIVE AND LEARN! This song is f AWESOME! <laughs> Anyways, yeah, while I respect other people's opinions on what music they like in a Sonic game, my pick goes for Sonic Adventure 2. LIVE AND LEARN, guys! LIVE AND LEARN! Alright, number 5 goes to the fact that Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood is one of my favorite RPG games. <laughs> Alright, to those who play the game, you might have mixed feelings about the game, whether you hate it or like it to some degree. That's fine with me. However, I enjoy the game in my opinion. So why do I like the game? Well, for me, I think the gameplay is good. Sure, using only the stylus feels watered down since you can't use the buttons in the game to some extent, but that didn't bother me. Plus, when I'm in battle, I see the turn order to see who goes next and having to tap circles at the right time or pressing it multiple times almost feels like a mini game. Also, I like the story of this game. Yeah, I admit the game ends in a cliffhanger because of reasons, but it was interesting to see what the story unfolds in terms of the lore of Sonic, like with the ancient echidnas and the geezoids from Sonic Battle. The only things I don't like about this game are the sound effects which sound so weird here and there, and some of the music in this game sounds bland and like it was made by a 5 year old with Down Syndrome. Regardless, the game is still fun to me. Not to mention, this game was developed by Bioware. You know, the guys who made Dragon Age, Mass Effect, and Anthem. The game is not perfect, but I do appreciate the mechanics the developers tried to make the game fun. So yeah, if you guys agree, that's fine. But if you don't... Well, that's cool with me too. Okay, for my number 4 unpopular opinion is that I think Mephilus is the best Sonic villain. 
Okay, I wonder how many dislikes I'll get after this. <laughs> so listen, I f hate Sonic 06 as I stated before. However, there were some things in the game I actually liked that I have to give credit to, aside from the music, is of course, the villain of the game, Mephiles. So, why do I like him more than any other Sonic villain like Dr. Eggman, Black Doom, or even- <laughs> Well, here's my reason why. See, Mephiles is the second half of the demigod known as Solaris when he has completed his connection with Iblis, another villain in the game. So to me, Iblis is the brawn while Mephiles is the brains, and the way how he acts in the game was manipulative, intelligent, heartless, malevolent, and rootless, but also calm, cool, patient, and stoic when facing his foes, mainly Shadow. His motivation is to get Silver to kill Sonic and make Elise try to release Iblis out of her as well as trying to break Shadow in the beginning of his creation to get the upper hand was genius for him to do. Now, I will admit Mephiles should try to use time traveling powers to find the Chaos Symbols easily and try to kill Sonic earlier to make Elise cry to release Iblis early to form Solaris, or at least try to kill Elise cause f*** that bitch! But seeing him manipulate Silver and being down Shadow for trapping him in the center of darkness in the past but also keeping his cool is so satisfying to watch. This dude is a f Devil. Now there are some other villains in the series that are much more stronger and smarter than Mephiles like Neo Mel Sonic or even Joe Robotnik, but after seeing Mephiles being so cool but ruthless makes me love him even more. Also, Dan Green who voices Mephiles is f***ing sexy! Don't take that out of context. Okay, now I'm time to trigger people again. I'm not sure if people can agree with me on this, but I had had chats in the others where I actually talked about it and they understand my opinion, but I thought I'd let you guys know about it. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, my number 3 unpopular opinion is that I do not like Press Garden from Sonic Mania. You stupid mother Alright, alright, hold on! I love Sonic Mania, it's one of my favorite Sonic games in recent years, and while I'll admit the game has flaws mainly in terms of the stages that were being made and were chosen to appear in the game was awesome, mostly the new stages in the game, mostly Studioopolis, Mirage Saloon, and Titanic Monarch. Yes, I love Titanic Monarch, f*** you. However, despite my positive look on the new stages, one of them didn't leave a good mark on me, and that is of course, Press Garden. Okay, so why don't I like this stage? Well, for the first act, you have these conveyor belts that you need to jump off to reach different areas, but it's so annoying depending on the angle and position that you're in. Now, I've gotten used to it, but yeah, it's still annoying to me. And don't even get me started on the second act! Okay, the things I like about the second act is the music. t -Lopes, you sir are a god! Anyways, back on Press Garden Zone Act 2. The scene itself, while it looks good, it feels boring and those stupid ice blocks and icicles which also have you involved being frozen and sliding from different slopes. Sure, it was fun, but it can be annoying and I don't plan on going back unless I want to. Plus, the boss fight with the Heavy Shinobi is one of my least favorite bosses in the game. I love Sonic Mania, as I said before, but having to play Press Garden Zone again? <laughs> Give me Mirage Alone all day, son! Okay, this next one may possibly going to be my most controversial opinion on this list. In fact, it's controversial that it almost became a close contender for a number one spot. But it may not be controversial to those once I reveal it, but it's worth mentioning. So, this opinion has been known mainly in social media, but when people disagree with that opinion, some can understand, some can agree, and some can disagree, but the majority will tend to go overboard with this opinion. So, I want to say this now, if you guys disagree with me, then that's fine, but please don't lash out or get angry at me or anyone that agrees with my next opinion. I want this to be civil, okay? No jokes, no insults. None of that for this next part. With that being said, here we go. My number two unpopular opinion is that I think Ian Flynn, the former writer of the Sonic Archie comics and the current writer of the IDW comics, is NOT a good Sonic writer. What? Yes, I just said that. Okay, so with that being said... Well, holy sh**. Okay, 
Now that the universe hates me, please let me explain. Now for all five of you guys who don't know who Ian Flynn is, thank god, let me give you guys the rundown. You see, Ian Flynn first wrote the Sonic Archie comics in issue 160 where he actually portrayed Sonic as fun loving cool and adventurous, but what actually made Ian Flynn famous is that he actually not only was familiar with the Sonic the Hedgehog characters from both the comics and the video games, but many fans actually love the stories that he actually told among the Archie comics. Since then, Ian Flynn has been praised by every single Sonic the Hedgehog fan and many Sonic fans demand for Sega to actually make Ian Flynn the next writer for the Sonic the Hedgehog video games, which I have to disagree with. Okay, so I'll admit Ian is not a completely terrible writer, but the first time I ever got into the Sonic Archie comics or Sonic comics in general was in issue 179 when Sonic and Tails got into an argument and were fighting but had a heartfelt conversation and afterwards they actually become very good friends again which leads to some very good character development which really sold me into the comics and I had to thank Ian Flynn for writing that comic. However, everything changed when the reboot came out. Okay, I'm going to say this, Ian's right in the Archie Comics reboot of Sonic the Hedgehog is not good because some of its stories are just bland rehashes of previous Sonic stories that were in the Sonic games. Sure, some of them took it to a different format, but the conclusion remains the same in the games, such as the Battle Bird Armada arc from Tails Adventure or the Werehog slash Dark Gaia arc from Sonic Unleashed. It's predictable and doesn't change anything with the exception of putting the Freedom Fires and more characters into the arcs. Now, I know that there are some fans out there who are going to argue at me saying things like boo, boo, it's for Sonic comic fans only, not all non-Sonic comic fans who haven't played the games. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be honest, I don't buy that at all. Here's my point of view. First of all, yes, the Sonic Archie comics are targeted to Sonic fans and non-Sonic fan readers alike in order to support the Sonic brand. But here's the thing, the Archie Sonic comics and the Sonic games are separate universes. They aren't canon from each other so that the writer can tell stories that differentiates from the games, which Ian Flynn didn't do for the comics in some places. And as for the Sonic game plots appearing in the comics, there are actual short comics and plots in some Sonic issues that try to help promote the games, like Sonic Rush Adventure and yes, even Sonic Unleashed in the past. So back then, when those short promotion comics came, non-Sonic fans who read the comics would have possibly sought those issues and bought the games already. So by the time the non-Sonic gaming fans have already seen those promotional comics, they may have played the games and know the full story. So having those Sonic game stories reappear in the Sonic comics reboot when some fans have already played those games and are shown in the comics later on, it would have the same outcome as the games, which as I said before, is a rehash. That to me is lazy on Ian Flynn's behalf. Another thing I don't like about Ian Flynn's writing is him changing some of the characters actions for no reason. For example, do you guys remember Fiona Fox and Jeffrey St. John? Fiona became evil not because she thinks Scourge is more badass than Sonic but mainly because in the old comics Fiona was abandoned by Sonic and mighty and locked in the cell by Robotnik leaving her to rot. However, it wasn't completely their fault, and Fiona joined the Freedom Fire soon after turning a new leaf. So having her turn evil was actually dumb, and it doesn't make sense on how she was portrayed back then if you read the old Sonic comics, that is if you had the balls to read them. <laughs> and there's no way in hell that I will believe that Jeffrey St. John would actually betray Sonic in the Freedom Fires to work with Inks' Nuggets. It honestly annoyed me reading those issues to see Jeffrey go rogue, and having Jeffrey actually go on trial is absolutely very sad, depressing, and absolutely difficult to actually read. Another thing I know people are really going to take me for this, but hear me out, I do not like how Ian Flynn ships Sally with Nicole making it official. Yeah, yeah, I don't like the pairing. Now, please listen to me. I do support LGBT characters. I do not mind LGBT characters being in media form, but only if framed properly as a way to express them as actual people, not for propaganda. Plus, the whole Sally and Nicole relationship to me honestly felt very unnecessary and kind of forced. Please don't call me a bigot or any anti-LGBT comments, please, because that's just plain mean and unnecessary. Oh, and don't even get me started on the IDW Sonic comments. Okay. 
I will admit the artwork in the comics from both IDW and Archie are fantastic most of the time, but still good nonetheless. As for the writing, yeah, it's not good too. It has the same problems as the previous Archie Sonic reboot comics, bland and uninteresting stories with one of them being resembling Sonic Heroes and the Metal Virus being very boring to me and has some stupid questionable moments. For example, in issue 12 of the IDW Sonic comics, Sonic asks Tails to repair Metal Sonic in hopes that he will be free to live his own life. But if you read issue 7 of the Sonic IDW comics, Metal in his Neo Metal Sonic form told Sonic in his face that Dr. Eggman input Metal Sonic's coding so he won't rebel and serve Eggman and Eggman alone. Metal has no free will or moral ambiguity. Sonic, you notice? Are you f stupid? Not to mention, some of the characters in the comics felt bland or out of character in my opinion, such as SPO, Vector, and even Shadow. Okay, I know people are going to be in the comments saying things that it was Sticker's fault for making Ian Flynn put Shadow and possibly the rest of the cast out of character in the comics, but others claim that it was Ian's intention and not Sega, but that's debatable in my point of view, and I don't want to get involved. So yeah, if you guys like Ian Flynn, his writing, or both, that's fine with me. I don't hate Ian Flynn as a person. I mix when it comes to him, honestly. This is what you have to see all the things that he says on his social media. The only, and I mean the only thing why his opinion is not number one is because while many Sonic fans love his writing, there have been some people who have disliked or criticized his writing in the past. Not just IDW, but Archie as well. And I'm very thankful to see people express their thoughts, opinions, and critiques on Ian's writing to see the flaws that it had. There's nothing wrong with having flaws, but it's worth mentioning. Also, please no Sonic fan debates, keep it civil please. Next thing I want to see is a bunch of Ian Flynn fan brats screaming and lashing out at me wanting me to kill myself. You know what, I'll do that! Okay, so what's my number one unpopular opinion you may be asking? Well, it has been talked about since on the internet, but it's about time for me to share it. Ladies and gentlemen, my number one unpopular opinion is that I do not like Sticks the Badger from Sonic Boom! Done! Yep, I do not like this annoying, hypocritical, paranoid badger! Alright, look, do I think that Stick is useless? No. Does she have some funny and cute moments that made me laugh? Yes. Do I want her to be killed? No. So why do I dislike Stick to begin with? Well, this is my last opinion, so the reason why I don't like Styx is mainly because of her personality and actions in the Sonic Boom cartoon. I don't like her for the fact that she is obviously paranoid, which goes so far as to assume that Sonic and her friends are either working for the government or they have been mind-controlling aliens. It's annoying because having Styx being paranoid makes me assume that she has trust issues. Not to mention, her paranoia is through the roof that not only is Styx actually putting herself in danger, but her friends as well. I know the world is scary and complex, Sticks, but don't be a f***ing idiot! Speaking of Sonic Boom, I don't like the two episodes that mainly focus on Sticks. I'm talking about the episodes Buster and the Curse of the Cross-Eyed Moose. <laughs> yeah, very creative names, guys. But in all seriousness, I think both these episodes portray Sticks as reckless without thinking straight. But the absolute worst thing I dislike about Sticks is her cynicism. What do I mean by that? Well, basically, it's a person who is motivated by self-interest, doubtfulness, and mistrust. And that's how I feel about Styx's character. Hell, even Bill Feinberger, the writer of the Sonic Boom cartoon, admits to this sh**. Did I also forget to mention that she is also very fond of robots such as Buster and Defe, despite being, oh, I don't know, created by Dr. Eggman? Okay, sure, robot rights, I get it. And they are no longer bad, but for God's sake, Stiggs, these were ruthless robots. You expect to actually love, cuddle, and reform Eggman's robots like Metal Sonic? Actually, that would be interesting to see. Okay, look. I don't fully hate Sticks the Badger, and I do think she has some good potential, but when it comes to her personality and actions, pushing her beliefs and assuming things for comedy reasons is not my cup of tea. Again, if you like her, that's fine with me. No arguments here. And those are my top 20 unpopular Sonic the Hedgehog opinions. Hope you guys enjoyed my video, unless you're going to show my balls off. But in all seriousness, I want to say something to you guys. Thank you all so much for 200 subscribers. I'm very grateful that you guys stayed on my channel listening to me talking about video games and stuff. 
I know that my channel isn't perfect, no YouTube channel is perfect, but as long as I'm still alive, I will continue to make videos for my viewers because I love you guys. And again, I thank you all for having to put out my crazy nonsense. If you guys like this video, please feel free to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to check out my demon art and Twitter to see my posts on art or updates. Again, thank you all for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. Take good care of yourselves. Be nice and civil towards each other. And I'll talk to you guys real soon. Have a nice day, ladies and gentlemen.